So I'm always looking for solutions for antennas and I found this one here on eBay. And this one's kind of interesting. It is, comes with this little PVC tube to protect the whip. And I don't really know that the whip needs protection, but we'll find out. It's also covered in heat shrink tubing for some weird reason. But there it is, it is a five-ish foot whip. I'll get you exact dimensions here in a second. And it comes with this little tuning unit. And this little tuning unit is pretty interesting. It is an inductor on top. So a toroid wrapped with some magnet wire. And on the bottom is a variable capacitor. And on the top, there's a little stud that you can take off. And the only reason I can see for this tube right now is when I take this stud off, I'll be able to drop it in the tube so that I won't lose it because the tube's a lot less losable than the stud is. So we screw the whip on and I brought the 705 out here today because what I'm looking for is an easy portable antenna. So we screw this onto the Windcamp RC2 and then we extend the whip all the way up and now it's over my head. So we'll turn the radio on and we'll see how this thing works. Okay, so first things first, I'm gonna tune this to, we're on 7030, that's a good enough place to start. There are indicators on the inductor. It's currently pointed at seven, and you can see that there is no noise. Let's see if we can find some noise by fine tuning with the capacitor. Nope. Let's get a bigger meter. So now we're gonna look for noise on here also. Oh, we can hear a little bit of CW signals coming in. Okay, so we're not finding anything that way. Let's try a different way. Okay, we're gonna go into menu, keyer, change this to a straight key. So we can put a little bit of a signal out. Go back to meter. So you can see on our SWR meter, we're off the charts there. Getting a little better. Okay, so if I set that to six, that's the best place for that part of it. And that capacitor is a little touchy. So six and five and we get over three to one SWR. So it's not good on 70 meter, on 70. It's not good on 40 meters. Let's try this on 20 meters. Well, there we go, FT8 signals. Let's get away from that so we can get a little bit better tunability. And what I'm doing is I'm listening for noise to come up. And I'm not really getting any noise coming up. Oh, that was good. Right there. Now we've got that on five. Ooh. That's looking good. So we turned it down to four. Nope, four. So two to one SWR, that's not too bad. I mean, it's not great, but it's not too bad. I'm gonna try one more time, then we've got some new fancy antenna stuff to play with. Kilo Mike 9 Golf QRP. Nope, all right, let's change the antenna up a little bit. So some of you keen-eyed observers might have noticed this little thing sticking out the side here. And what that is, is an Anderson power pole flying lead connected to the ground lug on the wind camp connector. So I, being the clever hand that I am, brought some extra wire. Let's get some extra wire on this thing. And I'm gonna start off with a single random length of ground radial. Let me get that plugged in. Yes, it's red to black, I know. Now let's see how this thing tunes up. Okay, let's go. Find a clear frequency. Change it over to CW mode. So we're at two to one. Oh, you can see the waterfall come up as I get closer. Okay, so there's hardly anything at all on the waterfall. And as I tune the inductor closer to resonance, you can see the waterfall signal starting to get stronger and stronger and stronger and then they go down just a little bit. So somewhere there or there is the best. So we go into our meter and we're off the charts, but I can tune the capacitor down. 
2.5. Two. There we go. Yeah, so adding that one ground radial didn't help. Let's add more ground radials. <laughs> Okay, now we've doubled the radials. Let's see how that works out. Okay, so we've lowered the SWR from 2 down to 1.7, 1.8, I guess. Kilo, Mike 9, Golf, QRP. Oh, QRP, one by one, down in the weeds. Try it again. Kilo, Mike 9, Golf, KM9G. Kilo, Mike 9, Golf, 5-9, Wisconsin. Negative copy, I have a kilo. One more time. Kilo, Mike 9, Golf. Kilo, Mike 9, Golf. Would that be a Kilo, Mike 9, Golf, QSL? QSL, QSL, you got it. Oh my God, Steve, you are, you are like a one by one in Tequila, 9111, New York, incredible. Keep up the great work, 73. 73, thank you. All right, so it works better with more radials because we tried that guy earlier in 9111. But we got him now. But that is not the only trick that this thing has up its sleeve because you can take this off. I brought another lead. So I've got a power pole on one end and I've got a ring terminal on the other. I'm gonna put that on here. And I'm actually still getting that station out of New York. We take that single radial that we had before and we make that our antenna wire. We'll drop the pole, that's what we'll do. That was actually the plan all along was to drop the pole. It's not I don't know what the alarm is. I feel like I'm at a hospital room. So he's at 316. I'm going to tune up, tune down away from his signal. I'm going to change my mode and check my SWR again and see where we are now that we have this newfangled antenna set up. So it actually got a little bit worse. Interesting. That's the best I can get. Let's go back up to 316. Kilo Tango Zero Alpha Delta Sierra. Yeah, I'm not going to be 10 over 9. Roger, roger. Thank you, David. 73. 82 CFI, QRZ. Kilo, Tango, Zero, Alpha, Delta, Sierra, QRP. Uh, stand by, QRP. Kilo, Tango, Zero, Alpha, Delta, Sierra, QRP. You're about a 3 by 3 into Kilo, 9111, New York, QSL. QSL the 3x3. Three three. This is Kilo Mike 9 Golf. You gave me a 1x1 one one a few seconds ago. I changed antenna. Same radio station, just a different antenna. Much better signal. Thank you. All right, and that was Kilo Tango Zero, Alpha Delta Sierra. Roger, Roger. K Toads. Roger, Roger. 73. Thank you for hunting. KV2 CFI, QIZ. Awesome. We got to take a look inside this thing. I'll turn that up so you can read it. So, what we have is our antenna stud up here. And then we have a toroid here with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven wraps, eleven turns. And that is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve taps on it. Yep, there's a tap on every single one. And that makes sense because a turn on a toroid, a turn on a core, is counted every time you go through the center. But 11 on the center would be 12 on the outside. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. And 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So there you go, because this is your this is your extra here that doesn't go through the center. It just goes around and taps and doesn't go back in. So 11 on the inside, 12 on the outside. It is connected here to the antenna connection here. And the only connection you're going to get is to the center conductor coming up here. And then that is married past to the capacitor. It is also married through to the center conductor on your PL259 connector. Out of the far side of the capacitor, you connect to just the ground. And the ground connects to the chassis and the chassis is insulated from the antenna stud. So there you have it. Lots of neat, interesting things going on inside of that. But essentially, it is an inductor and a capacitor, so it is an LC network that creates your tuned circuit. And it tuned up pretty well. 
I wanted to spare you all the details of tuning across all the bands. I was able to get it somewhere in the neighborhood of two to one across all the bands. And what does it say? 3.5 to 30, 50 to 54, 76 to 108, 117 to 136, 136 to 174, 400 to 470. It does work on all of those. You could probably use a more in tune antenna element to bring it closer to the match that this can provide. But other than that, this thing does fairly well. You heard the contacts. The, the more wire I added to the scenario, the better the signal report got. And I think that it is not a bad little trick to have in your antenna tool bag. Okay, so you can find these things over on eBay and they're, you know, 40 to 50, eh, they're 40 to $60. Uh, try and look for one that is somewhere closer to you than some other location. Some of these have this USA flag on them and they don't tell you where they're from, but it was able to arrive here fairly fast. Let's take a look at one of these and see what it says on the inside. Oh, this one comes with a bunch of coax adapters. Slightly different than the one that I got. As far as data goes on this thing, five megahertz to 55 megahertz, VSWR 1.5 at a bunch of different frequencies. Like I said, I couldn't get it down below two, but that could be just my area conditions. Power is 20 watts receives FM from 76 to 108. I'm sure it receives everywhere, everything. Can receive UHF and VHF, adjust frequency by knob, stretch size is 55.1 inches. So I told you close to close to five foot. Unstretched. So 11.8 collapsed, and then it has an M4 male connector on the top, and on the bottom, mine had a PL259. It looks like they do have a BNC model if you have a top-loading BNC connector. There will be a link in the description down below where you can find this antenna. There is a video right over here I think you will enjoy next. Thanks for being awesome. I'll see you over there.